The Summoner's Tale My lords, there lies in Yorkshire, as I guess, a marshy district known as Holderness, in which a friar, a limiter, went about to preach his sermon and to beg, no doubt, and on a certain day it so befell that he had preached in church and cast his spell with one main object far above the rest, to fire his congregation with a zest for buying trentals, and for Jesu's sake to give the wherewithal for friars to make their holy houses where the Lord is dowered. With truest honor, not to be devoured by those to whom there is no need to give, like those endowed already, who can live, thanks be to God, in affluence and glory. Trentals, he said, can fetch from purgatory the souls of all your friends, both old and young, yes, even when they're even when they're very quickly sung. Not that a priest is frivolous or gay, because he only sings one mass a day. Release the souls, he, thund he thundered, from the pit. Deliver them from the flesh hook and the spit. What agony to be clawed, to burn, to bake. Be quick, exert yourselves for Jesus' sake. When he had finished all he had to say, with que compatre, off he went his way. When folk had put their pennies in the plate, he used to go away, he wouldn't wait, with scrip and pointed staff uplifted high, he went from house to house to poke and pry, and beg a little meal and cheese or corn. His comrade had a staff, was tipped with horn, and a pair of ivory tablets jointed, also a stylus, elegantly pointed. He always wrote the names down as he stood, of those who gave him offerings or food, pretense of praying for them by and by. Give us a bushel of barley, malt, or rye, a wee God's cookie, then, a slice of cheese. It's not for us to choose, but as you please, a penny to say mass, or half a penny. Some of your brawn, perhaps. You haven't any? Well, then, a bit of blanket, a worthy dame. Our well-beloved sister, there's your name. It's down, beef, bacon, anything you can find. A sturdy varlet followed them behind, the servants for their guests, and bore a sack, and what they gave he carried on his back. Once out of doors again, and business done, he used to plain the names out every one that he had written on his ivory tablet on his ivory tables. He'd served them all with fairy tales and fables. Now you lie, you summoner, cried the friar. Shut up for Christ's sake, and be a little shyer of interpretation, said our host. Keep still, summoner, go on, spare nothing, nor I will. On with this friar from house to house, till he came up to one where he was wont to be, better refreshed than anywhere in town. The householder was sick and lying down, bedridden on a couch the fellow lay. Deus hic! Well, Thomas, how are we today? the friar said, taking great pains to soften his voice politely. God protect you! Often, how often, I've sat upon this bench to steal your kindness, eaten many a merry meal. And from the bench he drove away the cat, and laying down his pointed staff and hat, his scrip as well, he settled softly down, his comrade was off walking in the town, together with the varlet, to get sight of where it was he meant to spend the night. "'Oh, dear master,' said the sick old man, "'how have things been with you since March began? Ain't seen you for a fortnight now or more.' "'God knows,' he answered, "'I have labored sore, and more especially have said in care of your salvation many a precious prayer, and for our fr other friends.' But let that pass. I went this morning to your church for mass, and preached according to my simple wit. It wasn't all on text from Holy Writ, that's, for that's too hard for you, as I suppose, and I prefer to paraphrase or gloze. Glozing's a glorious thing in any way. The letter killeth, as we clerics say. And so I taught them to be charitable, and spend their goods where it is reasonable. And there I saw your wife, Ah, where is she? Out in the yard, I think, or ought to be, the fellow said. She'll come. She can't be far. Why, sir, you're welcome. By St. John you are, the woman said. I hope you're keeping sprightly. Up from his bench the friar rose politely, embracing her, 
the clasp was somewhat narrow, and kissed her sweetly, chirping like a sparrow. His lips, as his lips parted, Ma'am, he said, I'm fine. Your servant, ma'am, he said. In all that's mine. Thanks be to God that gave you soul and life. I haven't seen a prettier little wife. In all the church today, upon my word. Well, God amend defects, the woman purred. At any rate, you're welcome, I'll be bound. My warmest thanks. That's what I've always found. If I may trespass, you're so very kind on your good nature. If you wouldn't mind, I want to talk to Thomas here, you know. These curates are so negligent and slow, groping conscience, consciences with tenderness. I studied how to preach and to confess, earnestly read St. Peter and St. Paul, and walk about to fish and make a haul of Christian souls, pay Christ his proper rent, and if I spread his word, I am content. Now, dear master, by your leave, said she, scold the man well, for by the Trinity he is an, as irritable as an ant though he has everything a man can want. I try to keep him warm at night. I squeeze him, put my leg over him or arm to please him, and all he does is grunt like boar in sty. I get no other sports at him, not I. No way of pleasing him at all, I promise. Oh, Thomas, je vous dis. Oh, Thomas, Thomas, that is the devil's work and must be chidden. Anger's a thing by heavenly God forbidden. I mean to speak of that a word or so.